problem. God can glorify himself. Even in those questions that you don't have answers. Mountains surround Jerusalem. So the Lord surround his people. God is around his people. So welcome to church. Let's lift our hands up. Oh, Nani Kama. Akuna Mungu Kama wewe. Oh, Twa Kuin Kuinu wa Mungu wa Nguleo. Oh, Nani Kama wewe. Twa Kuin Kuin. Oh, Nani. Nani Kama wewe. Oh, Twa Kuinu wa Mungu. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your power. Great is your goodness. Ah, to me kuona, to me ona mkono wako, to me ona mguvu zako, to me ona ushindi wako, to me ona wokovu wako, to me ona baraka zako. Oh, tunakubariki bwana. Uinuliwe na ubarikiwe. Uinuliwe na ubarikiwe. Hallelujah. 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 Is it God good? Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your goodness. That we are still alive. That we can still sing a song. That we can still exalt him. I can say that he's still God. Even when the storms are raging, God has kept us saved. Weeping may endure for a night. I say weeping may endure for a night. But joy... But joy comes in the morning. But the joy of the Lord comes in the morning. May the Lord lift our hearts. May the Lord lift our hearts. Bless the name of the Lord. I say bless the name of the Lord. He is the King of kings. And the Lord of lords. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. That Jesus. 
I love that name, Jesus. We bless you. Amen. As we stand, I want us to open our Bibles. To Kisimama to John chapter 17, verse 4. John chapter 17. Once again, thank you so much for coming. And those of us who are watching online, we are so happy that you could find time to watch and worship together with us. We are very, very, very grateful. May the Lord greatly bless you. John chapter 14, 17, verse 4. We are beginning a series on God's assignment. Tell my God's assignment. God's assignment. And imagine God has given each and every one of us an assignment. And by the end of the day, your work will be judged. You'll have to give an account. And it's very good for you. When, when you are leaving, to know you are a man or a woman of purpose. You are not just here by accident. You are here by a divine purpose. And I like what Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 4. He's, he's kind of uh, looking back at his life and he's giving God glory for what he has done. He said in verse 4, I have brought you glory on earth by completing. I want us to read this together, us, all of us together. I have... Uh, some versions say finishing. He's saying, I have brought you glory. And you know, at this particular time, he was just about to be crucified. But he's looking back and he's telling God, the assignment that you gave me, the assignment that you gave me, I have complete, I have done a well done job. And I have glorified you. And the reason why we are here, and the reason why God has caused us to be alive even today is because God wants your life to glorify him. That's the chief end of man. After all is said and done. It's not what we have done for ourselves. It's what God we have done for God that will count. And as you sit down, I want us to be seated quiet. Thank you. Worship him. They have done a good job. Let's give a clap offering to them. In Matthew chapter 28, just is when Jesus wanted to go back to, to his father. And he's giving an assignment to his disciples. Matthew 28, 19. We can, we can just begin from verse 18. Matthew 28, the last chapter of Matthew 28, verse 18. If you are there, say amen. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will with you always to the very end of the age. And I want you to mark, go, go and then make disciples of all nations and then you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I that's, that's our assignment. We call it the Great Commission. Some, of, some have called it the Great Omission because people have not carrying on that, that, that assignment. And I also was reading in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. I want to say God loves souls. God loves people. 
And he, when, when Peter is writing this letter, he's saying, God is not willing for anyone should perish. But everyone, say my everyone. Everyone will come to repentance. God loves souls. God loves lost people. God loves to save people that are lost. And that's, somebody said, evangelism or outreach is the heartbeat of God. We are all here because somebody preached to us. Somebody gave us the word of hope. Somebody gave us the gospel. You are here as a result of somebody that shared their faith, that shared the word of God in their lives. So this month, our focus will be on outreach, reaching out, ministering to other people. Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, he says, let your light shine. That do good work, he's speaking about doing good works. Do good works that you will let your light shine. That people will see your good work and glorify God who is in heaven. And that's what I'm saying. We are on assignment. We are not just here to eat and drink. But God has given us a greater purpose. Whether you are a housewife, whether you are working, whether you are doing business, wherever you are, wherever you are, that's your mission field. Even our young people, you, you, your friends are your mission field. Your school is your mission field. Your businesses is your mission field. Your, your neighborhood is your mission field. And I want to give four reasons, four compelling reasons why we need to witness. And I thank God for seeing you with your, with your notebook and writing me. It really encourages me when I see people writing, uh, you're a good student. Four compelling reasons. Sabab mne za kutuma sisi tuweza kuwa shuda wa Yesu. Number one, it's a great commission. And it's a great commandment. And you know, it's a I, I was looking at the word commandment or a commission because they go in hand in hand. A commission is an instruction or a command or a role given to a person or a group. It's a rule to observe strictly. When it, it's a rule to observe strictly. In other words, you don't have a, a preference or an, an opinion on a commandment. Are we together? It's, it's not optional. And one of the things that when we go to heaven or when during the judgment of God, one of the things that God will ask, what, what did you do with your life? What did you do with what I gave you? And when we, when we obey God, when we obey God is a sign of honor, sign of obedience. When you honor somebody, when you obey them, you say, I honor you, I respect you, I glorify you. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we are speaking about the Great Commission, we are speaking something that we don't have a preference or something that is not about our own opinion or our own conveniences. It's a commission. It's a, a, a commandment. And the best thing that you can do is to obey it. And number two, why it's very important, God expects you to bear fruits. God expects you to bear fruits. In John chapter 15, Jesus saying, I am the vine and you are a branches. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut off. But every, every fruit that bears fruit, it's pruned so that it can produce more. The other day we spoke about stewardship. And we mentioned four things about stewardship. We said that everything, everything that 
everything, everything God owns. And how faithful we are with what we have will determine our future success. And number three, we said we only manage whatever we have for a season. Your life is for a season. The opportunity that God has given us, they are only for a season. And then we said that God will have to give an account for everything that God has given to us. So I am just challenging us that wherever we are, let our life be fruitful. Let people see our light. Let people taste our salt. So basically God is expecting us to bear fruit. And fruit can be, uh, you've read in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 when he's speaking about the fruit of the spirit. But apart from the spirit or the fruit of the spirit, joy, peace, love, 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 long-suffering, patient, gentleness, apart from that fruit in our life, God expects us to bring people as people, God expects us to bring souls to him. Every branch that does not bear fruit, it's cut off. And I believe with all my heart that every one of us here is capable of bringing a person to Christ. I say everyone who is here and everyone who is listening to us is capable. God is able to use you with your little words, with your little resources. You remember the, ma the man who was in John chapter 9 was born blind and Christ healed him and he said, I don't know so much about him. But one thing I know is that I was blind, but now I can see. Your testimony is a powerful tool. I say your testimony is a powerful tool to bring people to Christ. I was blind, but now I see. And I was being reminded of the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. He say, she's saying, come and see a man. I say, come and see a man. And as you also can tell people, come and see a man. So we must be reminded that God expects us to bear fruit. God expects you to blossom wherever you are. God expects you to be his hand and eyes and ears. And I believe that God is going to use us when we allow him to partner together with us. In John chapter 16, when he's speaking about the Holy Spirit, we, he said, we are like vessel in his hand. He is the one who convicts. We give the word, we bear our testimony, but the Holy Spirit convicts people of their sins, of their guilt, and about the judgment of God that is about to come. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says, and you shall receive power to be, and you shall receive power to be, and sisters and brethren, there is no other greater joy than God using us for bringing souls to Christ, for bringing harvest in his household. The heart of God is very happy. When you invite somebody to church, when you invite somebody to fellowship, when you pray for them to know Jesus Christ as their personal savior, God expects us to bear fruit. And some of this fruit, we bear fruit by doing good works. Somebody says, preach the word, and if necessary, use words. Preach the word, and if necessary, use the words. So your life, your life can be a light. Your life can be a salt. Your life can be a source of attraction. When people look at your life, they will see your life different than other people. And we are in partnership. And God has appointed us. In John chapter 15, verse 15, he's saying, I no longer call you servant, but friends. And I have chosen you and appointed you to go and bear fruit and your fruit that will last. God has appointed us. God has chosen us. Among other people in our lives, God has chosen us that we may bear fruit and your fruit will last. And I want you to know this is your responsibility. This is your assignment in life.
apart from doing other things in life, God has chosen you. God has chosen you and me to be partner together with him. And number three, we must realize that man is lost without God. Man is lost without God. Man is blind, he's hopeless, and he's in bondage. In Mark chapter 8, verse 18, Jesus says they have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they are not able to hear. Man is lost without God. I say man is lost without God. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, he says, once you were not a people, you had not received man mercy, but, no, but now you have received mercy. We must realize without Christ, there is no hope. Without Christ, there is no, no heaven. And somebody, they say there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Just as heaven is real, also hell is real. People are lost without God. I was looking at the current situation in our country. When you look at the news, it's very unfortunate. Sometimes you get depressed. People were murdering. And the other, the other day, was it last month, of a, of a man who raped her own two daughters and they were pregnant. When you look at the situation the way uh, they are, we look at the political situation, people have got, lost their morals. There is no godliness. There, there is no even fear of God, even in churches. And it's very unfortunate that even people are doing politics and as abusing people in the church, a holy place. It's very unfortunate, things that are happening. But man is lost. I, I say man is lost without God. And I was being reminded of a illustration of about a blind man chasing a black cat in a dark room. That is it. The way the situation is, People are looking and chasing for things. They are like a blind man in a dark room chasing a black without God. All is vanity. Uh, Solomon said without God is all is vanity. And Jesus asked a question in, uh, in Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 saying, What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his or her own soul. That question normally, when I read that, that question and when I made that, read that question, that is very serious. If you gain, the, not about being governor and not about being president, he said, if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul. There is nothing that you can exchange with your soul. Your soul is important. Your soul will live for eternity. And Jesus is asking, what will it profit you? And by the way, if you are going to live for many years, maybe the boss that you can live is 120 years. But what will it profit you if you lose your own soul? And you must realize Three things, four things. Life is brief. Life is short. In fact, James chapter 4 verse 14 is saying it's like a vapor. It appear and disappear. It, it's short. May the Lord open our eyes and we must realize we are here temporary. We are not here. We are not permanent resident in this place. And number two, we must realize that death is real. Death is real. The Bible says the last enemy to be destroyed is death. But death is real. Even if you don't believe it, it will still come. And all of us, one day we will go. It's real. And there is finality in death. But thank God to those. Because after death, there is a resurrection. The Bible says some of us will be raised to the, to, to the resurrection of eternal life. 
And some of us will be raised to the resurrection of eternal condemnation. And number three, we must realize that God's judgment is inevitable. God's judgment is inevitable. The word inevitable, inevitable means certain, unavoidable, certain to happen. It will surely happen. And the decision we make today will determine where we are going to spend our eternity. I say the decision, even young people, I want to speak to you. The decision that you are making today will determine where your destiny will be. And my auntie used to tell me again and again, he so used to tell me, Simon, this life is preparing, is a, in, an opportunity to prepare to where you are going to spend your eternity. Life is short. Death is certain. And God's judgment is inevitable. And we must decide where we are going to spend our eternity. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it, but the end of it is death. May the Lord open your eyes that you may see the end of your life, that you may see the end of your destiny. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is death. Man is lost. I was meditating on the the, the, the song of the amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I was once lost, but I am I'm fine. Was blind, but I see grace. And I thank God for grace. I say I thank God for his grace. I am here by the grace of God. When I remember where God took me from Bahati, there was no hope for me. And when I got saved, people gave me one month, people gave me three months, six months, and after one year, they stopped giving me because in Bahati, eh, but in Mungu ni Mwema. I say God is good. God's power is unlimited. God can take somebody from the ghetto and bring him to pulpit. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm speaking about the amazing grace of God. Wherever you are, the hand of God is not short to save us. And when Amos was speaking to the children of Israel, in Amos chapter 4 verse 12, he's saying, prepare to meet your God. And the Bible says, all of us, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, all of us must appear before the judgment seat of God, and everyone will give an account. You know, sometimes, back, I think it was 2016, when our KG University was being given a charter, and then we went to State House. Tuliamuka mapema sana. By 6, tulikuwa kwa getia State House. Oh my God. The security protocol. Nikasema kama ni hii, kuona kuona present na kuwanga na mna hii. ID, siju toe nini, iwe counter check. Na hile nini, tukua. Na siku wanaenda kumusalimia, akiwa kule na, just ingia kwa state house. It was a process. We took almost three hours for checking. Because we are many. To go and see the president of Kenya. And I was telling myself, aren't you scared <laughs> when you're going to see, to meet the king of the universe, the holy one of Israel, the one who made the heavens and the earth, the stars and the moon. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is a consuming fire. And everyone, imagine everyone, God will have a time for each and every one of us. He said, everyone will give an account. And every kneel, saying every kneel, whether you are a president, whether you are a sweeper, every kneel shall bow and declare Jesus is Christ to the glory of God the Father. And I want to live my life open. I want to live a holy life. I want to walk in righteousness. Because even me one day I'll give an account. I'll give an account for this church. 
I'll give an account for my family. I'll give an account of how I use my money and the resources that God gave to me. It's not just you live and go, go no. Even if we pray for you when you are dead. You know, there are people who pray for people who are dead. The Bible says it's appointed for months who wants to die. And after death, there is no purgatory. And after death, judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. It's appointment. It's an appointment. And in this appointment, you don't have a choice. You will have to go. And as we live, let's live for God. And there will be no regret. As we live, let's love people. As we live, let's glorify God. Every day when you wake up, Lord, you tell God, God, I want to be used of you. God, I want to glorify your name. God, I want to walk in your ways. And number four, we are engaged in an internal battle with our enemy, Satan. When you're winning souls, when you think about souls, I was being reminded of what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the work of Satan is to kill, destroy, and steal. But I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, I hope they are putting that on the name. Jesus' mission is said, I have come to preach good news. To set the captive, they are people who are held by the enemy. Wengine wamefungwa na uchawi. Wengine wamefungwa na dini. Wengine wamefungwa na visababu. Wengine wamefungwa na I am still young. Wacha ni ponde raha kama excuses. The spirit of deception is at work in our lives. The spirit of materialism. And I was, I, 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 was so, I was shocked. They were doing a research and they said one of the main, main thing about young people, they are into the things, materialism, getting rich. And I saw a matatus written, get rich or you die. You're your philosophy, okay? But there is something good than richness to know Christ, whom to know is eternal life. I came that they might have life and have it in abundance. I came that your joy may be complete. And in Acts chapter 26, verse 18, he's saying, He came to heal the blind eyes, to set the captive from the power of Satan, and to receive forgiveness. We are not ignorant of the work of the enemy. And we need to pray for our friends. We need to pray for our family. We need to pray for our country that God will open their eyes. That God will set free them free from every excuse, from the spirit of deception. You know, some people will tell you, oh, even me, I'm better than people who are saved. It's not about how better you are. It's about whether you know Christ as a personal your savior. Is your name in the book of life? In Revelation chapter 20, the Bible says names will be read. Names will be read. The book of life. And if your name is not there, so unfortunate. Imagine, I will be so glad to hear. Simon Mohuko Maina. I will say present and accounted for Lord. Do you know your name is very sweet? Margaret Mohuko Maina. Oh, Margaret Njeri Mohuko. <laughs> when the name, when your name is called up. What does that, how does that song so? When you, eh? Namaji naya itwa po. Namaji naya itwa po. Now my Ikajina nita kuepo. Hallelujah. Unaeza kosa kwa cabinet minister. Unaeza kosa kwa governor. 
Unaweza kosa kwa promotion. Lakini jina lako lisikose hapo. Hale, I say your name will not miss there. I say young people your name will not miss there. I'm looking forward towards that day. And you know, the Bible says a thousand years is like a day to God. Because since Christ went, it's only two days. And he has gone to prepare a place for us. I say he has gone to prepare a place for us. And when Paul is writing to the Corinthians, he's saying, No, I have seen or ear heard the things that God has in preparation for us. Miss all other things, but don't miss heaven. I say miss all other things, but don't miss heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And as I conclude, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, he says, We are fighting against authorities, spiritual wicked forces in the high places. So we are not ignorant. We are in a battle. And we need to rescue some of these people. Some of them we need to rescue from where they are, from the fairy furnace, and pray for them and bring them to Christ in the name of Jesus. We want to claim our family members, our friends, our, 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 our politicians. May the Lord open their eyes that they will learn to seek first. I say they will seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these other things. And I want to tell ourselves, when we seek first God, your life will be okay. Your family will be okay. Your business will be okay. When you seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all these other things. Praise the name of the Lord. And somebody said there are two important things. He said that he said the most important experience is knowing Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Most important experience is knowing Jesus Christ personal. Naiki to ni personal. I N Atakama Mama Angwa Kubali. Atakama Mewangwa Kubali. It's a personal. It's a personal decision. Na wewe hata kama pastor at a backslide is a personal. Na juu kinasema, hey, kama pastor ameanguka, who are we? Uh -uh. It's a personal. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Whether demons or demons from hell will come, it's a personal. I will follow him till the end. Through the fiery furnace, through the varies, through the difficult, whether God answer my prayer or not, I will still, I will still follow him. It's a personal experience. I will serve him. Whether what what I comment or what I I will still follow him. If atani wote mukirudi nyuma mimi bado. And the second important things you can do for another person is to help them know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. The most important thing you can do for another person is to help them to know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Somebody preached to me. That's why I'm here. Somebody prayed for me. That's why I'm here. That is the greatest, the most important thing you can do for a person. When I saw your son, God has given you an assignment. Even you young people. Mungu alitumia Samuel when we were still young. And David. Don't despise yourself. The people say, don't let anyone despise you. Wherever you are, let your light shine. That people will see your good work and glorify. I am on a mission. I say we are on a mission. This church is on a mission. This church will be a light to the nation, to the people of Mwoja. And beyond, we must bring the harvest for the coming of the Lord draws near us. And I remember what Jesus say, said, when you see all these things, wickedness increasing, nation rising against nations, lift up your eyes for your salvation draws near. And this one of the finest, they will hear the trumpet. 
Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord will blow a trumpet and the dead in Christ shall be resurrected. And I want to be among them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God is good. Are there witnesses in this place? I say, are there witnesses in this place? You know, some of you are admiring people when you see them driving big cars and living in big houses. But Jesus is saying, what will it profit if they have lost their soul? Now you see that lost soul, yeah, quite potent. Now see that the water and bow mungo may bring on you. Tell them about Jesus Christ. I say, keep telling them about Jesus Christ. They are loved of God. The kingdom of God is real. Heaven is real, and hell is also real. And time, we don't know when we will go. And people don't die because they are sick. Point me tia kwe kifika, we tayari. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Knowing Jesus, I have no regret and I have no apology. I say I have no regret. Unajua kuna watu wana threaten Yesu wanaweza acha Yesu. Kwa sababu Yesu hakuanza prayers. Eh? I will follow him. Peter asked him, unajua reach a place Yesu akasema watu we were going away from Christ akauliza do you also want to go akasema where do we go and you have their life and we tell in Jesus where are we going? we are not going atubanduki we will still follow even when the going gets up we will still because we know who we are following he has given us life malo inaitwa malo eh hey, god jesus has given us malo uhai amen and we speak life even to our families we speak life in our community we speak people who know Jesus Christ people will be saved people will start serving God people will be soul winners in this church i say this church will be soul winners and i want you to make a covenant before you leave in this place that this year you are going to bring somebody to Christ and not only bring them to Christ we are going to disciple them i say you are going to disciple them I have brought you glory by completing. Let's stand. I have brought you glory. I don't know what what kind of testimony that God will speak about your life or what you will say about your life. If we are to come to the end of your life, how, what would you say? It's not all about you. You know I have realized life become meaningful when we give our life and we give services and our resources to other it's all about service god has called us to serve others and as we serve others god has a way of blessing us blessing us praise the name of the lord